Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're checking out another issue of the monthly hobby magazine, Hobby Japan, since 1969. This is the April 2021 issue, so I'm a little bit late. I've had this for a little while. When this issue came out, I really debated whether I wanted to order it or not. I'd seen around on Twitter some of the builds that are in here, and they looked really cool, so that I know there's some really cool stuff in this issue, and we'll go through this here in just a moment, but the reason why I kind of, I'm a little bit tempted not to buy monthly magazines usually is because I've talked about this before. Usually like the whole back half of the magazine is all just like advertisements for new kits coming out and stuff like that. It's all not really that interesting. Most of the interesting stuff is all just in the first half where you have like the main features of the magazine. In which case, this is a Diorama Technique 2021 issue, theme, or themed issue, I should say. So it's going to be all sort of Diorama themed, sort of. But there is a lot of really cool stuff in here. So I finally decided to just go ahead and pick it up just because I know there's some cool stuff in this issue. So hopefully if you guys haven't seen this issue or maybe you're like me and you've seen some of this stuff around on Twitter. But now this is a chance for you to share this experience with me going through and seeing all this stuff actually in the magazine. So right in here in the front, again, it's just all advertisements for new stuff. But this uh, Basquiat themed bear brick over here is pretty cool, I will say. That's kind of interesting. We got some more advertisements for a whole bunch more bear brick stuff over here. It's kind of interesting. The Mona Lisa one is very cool. You got this Digimon themed one down here. All right, then YouTube movies. So this is all like advertisements. Usually they'll just put a little page here if there's uh, YouTube videos regarding like some of the content in the magazine. So I guess there's probably some YouTube videos uh, related to a couple of the builds here in the magazine, it looks like. So check those out if you guys are interested. We got our table of contents here and some more table of contents. And then it's on with the dioramas. So this is just all going to be in Japanese, of course, so I won't be able to give you guys too much information about what the actual text is saying in here. It's just the theme of this is dioramas, so it's all dioramas in all sorts of different types of mediums. So you can see we got the Gunbuster kit, we've got a Machine Krieger one, which you can't really see in this photo, but there's a Machine Krieger kit up in there. We do have a Gundam one in here. We have a Cup Noodle one, which is really cool, and a couple of other just kind of scale modeling things. So let's go ahead and get right in here started and it looks like at least this first picture or it's just kind of there's a picture of the machine Krieger one which is really cool. It's got this uh, vending machine and this uh, kind of like walking home probably drunk salary man kind of thing. He's walking home and then up there is the new spotter spying on the guy or about to attack the guy or I don't know what, I, what exactly it's doing up there but you got the new spotter kit up there. The Machine Krieger drone, which is a variant of the Krakenvogel, which is the one that I'm currently working on. So that's really cool there with the lit up eye kind of floating up above this sort of like nighttime alley scene. It's very cool. And then with the vending machine lit up as well too. It looks awesome. So I really love that diorama. We'll see some more pictures of that here in a little bit. This is all just like a, a Q&A section, it looks like sort of, or just like a commentary section just about dioramas in general. So I'm not sure who it's with. Uh, I would guess just one of the editors there at Hobby Japan. But there's another look at the diorama from more from afar down here so you can see it's just this sort of like side of the building there with the new spotter just flying up above the vending machine there so then you got all the trash and everything in there. Very cool diorama. So a couple of little scenes down here and here is some more pictures of that. So the title of this diorama is My Blue Heaven. Quite interesting. Uh, this diorama is built and described by Takuji Yamada. Not a name that I'm familiar with off the bat but I'm sure I've probably seen other works of his so there's just some more large photos of that so you can see like the whole side of the building there which even just that without the new spider kit which is just kind of up it almost seems like that would be the main focus of the kit and it sort of is but just the scene even without that is just a really nice diorama just with the vending machine and the guy just kind of walking home in this back alley sort of thing but very cool and you got this angle like kind of the view of the new spotter looking down at the guy down there and even the manhole cover and just like the street all looks really cool it's so nicely done uh, you got some more photos of that, and so I guess all this text is probably just all going to be talking about that. It looks like the figure of the guy is probably just all entirely scratch built there. It looks like that's just all formed and carved from just some epoxy putty. It's building that figure there. He's carrying home his uh, bento lunchbox there, probably a late dinner, late uh, fourth meal kind of thing. Very Japanese. You got what looks like probably a scratch built, possibly is that scratch built? I don't know if it's from any sort of kit or anything, the air conditioner unit there and all the trash. You got a scooter kind of parked up in there as well too it looks like. So plenty of detail and you got a nice kind of larger shot here of the actual new spotter kit. 
So really awesome details. This one is one that's just super cool as well too. This is from Masaki. If you guys have seen my past uh, reviews of different magazines like this, uh, Masaki is a name you guys have heard me talk about quite a lot because he's featured a lot in these and also in uh, quite often in the uh, GHL, Gundam Hobby Life series as well too, I believe. Uh, but this one is using the cup noodle kit, but he set it as like, obviously changed the scale quite a bit and made it look like this giant cup noodle next to like a cliff with a waterfall going down into it and you've got some wildlife down here, some deer and stuff down below where the waterfall is kind of turning into just a river down there at the bottom. So really awesome just changing the scale and just sort of weathering the hell out of this, beating it all up to make it look like it's sort of like this big stone sculpture kind of thing that's fallen over. So here you can see kind of what that looks like outside of the diorama just on its own and all kind of broken up into pieces again to sort of, I guess, sort of mimic to mimic the look of sort of like a big stone statue or something. And it looks like this is maybe an interior piece that he just built for that. I'm not really exactly sure why. Oh, does, because uh, it doesn't have the lid on it. So maybe we'll see that from a different angle so you can see down into it. But this is the internal kind of structure piece that he made for that, that just goes down inside of there instead of the noodles. Here's some of the animals. So you got a deer, boar, a little fox there, some boar, what are those called? Would they be piglets? If they're pigs, they're piglets. If they're boar, what are they called? I don't know. Anyway, and then there's a kind of pretty in-depth guide here as far as how the diorama is made. So it's pretty useful. All the text is in Japanese, but let's just go ahead and just kind of see what we can see. So there's some uh, just actual wood pieces used, it looks like, for this. And it looks like he's just kind of brushing the wood clean and getting everything kind of placed to, you know, kind of about how he wanted it. He's got the wood screwed down to the base board for that and then using some clay to build up uh, the clay on the back side of that just to make it look like rocks there, it looks like. And then on the next page, just kind of filling in some, or filling in some glue down there at the bottom and the ground at the bottom of the base, filling that in with some more actual just small rocks and then just kind of giving everything a coat of probably some putty and primer and stuff just to kind of check the look of how the structure of everything's looking in the rocks and all the terrain and everything. Then going in, adding some more fine bits of the terrain, some soil, sand, dirt, small rocks, things like that in there to add that in, painting in on some of the rocks for the kind of green foliage look of that as well too. So again, lots of great, I mean, the pictures are small, but lots of pictures along the way to kind of show you the different steps, kind of how it's evolving. So it's really cool to see. Uh, and then adding some rocks like into the top of the structure there as well too. So I guess it looks like so maybe there's been some earthquakes or something and as like maybe the cup fell against the cliff maybe some rocks fell on top of it so that's kind of cool and adding some looks like water into the back of there so like behind the actual falling water just to make it look wet inside there as well too it looks like that's what's going on there and then starting to add the actual falling water down into that there's more of just adding the water effects very cool and so there's some a look at like some of the materials used for that. I don't know offhand and this is particularly not my forte. I don't know a whole lot about diorama building but I mean I'm sure if you just get some translation going on some of that Japanese it'll explain a little bit more about the products used and all that. So uh, and then just uh, finalizing that with some water there at the base it looks like using some UV light for that. Fixing the rest of the water, getting everything all sorted out, using a little cube there. What's that? Uh, just a uh, clear resin, mixing up some clear resin uh, to pour in there for the water. So getting that all mixed up, it looks like he probably, I don't know if this clear resin is like clear blue or if he added like a little bit of paint into that to make it a little bit more kind of clear blue rather than plain clear. So then just pouring that, getting the bubbles out of the resin there, it looks like I believe is probably what that process is. And pouring that in here for around the bottom, pouring some in around there and just kind of getting that all looking good. It looks great. It's <laughs> super cool. Masaki is an amazing modeler. So final stages then is just adding some ripple effects then onto the water and then some more uh, kind of ripple effects like on the top of the flowing water there and everything. Then adding some more foliage, some more plants and things onto that. And it's basically done. There you go. Watering hole uh, is the name of this one from Masaki. So we'll see some more finished photos of this here now. Very cool to see like the entire process all step by step and then with the finished product, which looks amazing. Very cool. I love the addition of the wildlife in there as well too. It adds so much character to this. If it was just that, like without the wildlife, I mean, it'd be cool, but with the little animals and stuff there at the bottom, just really makes it all that much better. 
So super cool diorama. All right, now something Gundam related. It is the Origins gun tank here, a sort of a crashed, destroyed version of that. So again, we have a pretty detailed step-by-step -step guide for this one as well too. So sort of in this crashed urban setting. So I'm just trying to see if what this first step is working on is actually the base or if this is gonna be like part of the wall and the floor. I think this is gonna be like part of the destroyed floors of the building. So adding a bunch of effect onto that and painting on that, it looks great. And it looks like maybe these are just some more pieces that are going to become the building using some kind of like foam core board or something. And then just kind of adding some putty and weathering and stuff onto that just to make it look like uh, cement. So a bunch of processes going on with that. It's kind of hard for me to tell you know, what's really happening with that. I mean, at least I can see what he's doing, but these are just gonna be parts of the street basically. So here's kind of making this crushed section of concrete there. I think like kind of where the gun cannon is gonna actually be sitting on there. Painting in the lines on the street, masking that, and then just painting that kind of loosely by hand just to make it look, you know, obviously worn. Then this is cool, uh, adding some damage to the wall, like bullet holes in the wall. So you can see how that's doing. Basically kind of makes the main holes there at first and then sort of damages them out a little bit more just to make it look like, so not only have the impact hole, but then like the explosion around there where the our surrounding material would also be kind of busted out as well too. So uh, adding some weathering around on the building as well too to make it look like there was a fire coming out of the building. So you have that kind of like charred look of like the smoke pouring out from the inside of the building. So very nice. And then the actual physical damage done down here onto like the tank, like tread sections of the gun tank, origin version of the gun tank down here. So that damage all looks very cool as well too. Not just like destroying the plastic, but also having some parts where it's kind of bent out as well too from what looks like an explosion or whatever. So then the actual paint weathering going on on that, rust color, and then giving going on with some other different colors on that too give it that uh, rusted, broken, burnt look. And I'm not really sure exactly what this material is, but this uh, it looks like it's he's adding there to make it look like uh, basically uh, ash or what would it be like charcoal? The charred remains of the pieces that had just been there burning, destroyed uh, from, again, an explosion adding. So there's like some cool internal details and stuff that he added into that to make it look like it was actually like a metal structure actually destroyed, exploded and all that. So a uh, really cool little diorama here with that. The destruction to the kit looks so nice. It's really, really well done. Looks very cool. So you got some really nice close-ups of that. Uh, this is really good reference material. So I'll definitely keep this in mind next time I do a damaged Gundam kit. So next up we have the Gunbuster, a very cool kit which I reviewed a little while back when this kit came out. Let's check that out if you're interested. But this one is uh, not so much like your typical diorama, but it's this sort of diorama from the movie. So we have this really cool black and white photo here on the uh, at first, but then you can see some more details about that. So uh, this sort of uh, space scene there where it's obviously ripping the heart out, something that was a gimmick of the particular kit. So it's just sort of detailing how this part of the base was all made there using a bunch of different parts. Using Obviously there's some recognizable parts from the Bandai action bases and also the cup noodle kit once again making appearance. So these are pieces of the cup noodle kit, sort of like gear looking pieces around on that actually work quite well for creating this sort of look and just a bunch of different, different scrap pieces and things that those look like pieces of an R2-D2 kit I wanna say or something, maybe used for like the base of this column right there, possibly. So again, the black and white imagery is cool and I like that. And I also really love this detail on the kit. So like aside from the whole like tearing, tearing the heart out of the chest, but it's also got like this exploded panel kind of up here uh, where the panel's like bent out a little bit. It looks really cool. It's just a small little thing, but it's a really interesting kind of piece of like actual physical damage done to the build that looks really cool ultimately. So you got some nice detail images of that. Really nice uh, chipping of the yellow paint on there as well too. That looks really nicely done on there. All right, then this next section is about going out and using stuff from actual nature, just taking stuff from nature and using that in your dioramas. So let's see, this is a diorama built and described by Tetsuya Koike. So I'm not exactly sure, I'm guessing that this is Tetsuya Koike. Uh, so I would imagine probably who that is. So you got an image here of the diorama, which we'll see some more images of in just a second, but very cool sort of like uh, 
just uh, again sort of like alleyway destroyed kind of stuff or just like abandoned stuff but first he is showing just kind of going down to kind of the local stream local river as you guys can see if you've ever been anywhere in like rural japan you can see those areas or not even rural they're just like suburban japan where they have the kind of small river streams going around the cities and things like that so this is looks like that kind of area so collecting some different plant life and stuff that would be good like in small scale so he's just kind of showing off some bits that he's taken i guess like filling some jars worth of that stuff taking it home some small reeds and just plants and grass and moss and stuff that can be used so really cool to kind of see just the example of some things that you can use actually from nature that could be useful for creating this type of diorama you got all sorts of like little sticks and stuff down here as well too large and small obviously the larger ones you can make it look like a like a tree and the smaller ones you can make look, look like smaller branches and things like that so here's a look at the actual diorama itself as so you can see some of that stuff actually in use here and it's got some of those uh, japanese bears down there as well too sort of checking out the abandoned car there it looks like here's some more well-lit photos you can see that a lot nicer so it's a really cool little scene. It looks like it's taking place, or like the scene is set next to some train tracks or something like that. So there you got the signal box there for the train, and this kind of old uh, shed over here, and some stuff inside there. It looks like maybe a space heater or something, but just some random things. But it's random. I mean, all the stuff is so nicely well placed that it looks completely believable. You have a surfboard in there as well too, a, a guitar case. So very cool. this building so let's see is there anything more to it other than just the building i think that's kind of the main focus of it but it's a super well done building yeah that's kind of the main thing but man it looks incredible so it's just this uh kind of steel building there so we'll just get on with it so first he sketches it out makes a blueprint for it basically and then starts building the structure out of just plot plate pieces build that up build it up build it up using the chopper there very cool building up the frame of the building, building up the window frames and all that, making the windows, cutting those out of, I'm just gonna guess clear plot plate for those. Well, all right guys, well the mic got out a little bit more here for a good little bit talking about this build, so I'm just going in and re-recording some voiceover here for you guys. But uh, the yes, the continuation of this build here, what this sort of aluminum bit looks to be here is just some cut up pieces and you can see it looks like just something from Daiso or something at a dollar store. One of those like uh, takeouts, just like aluminum trays you use on a picnic or something like that. So what he's done is just taking one of those and then just cut up using the pieces of that for some actual pieces of aluminum and using that to create some parts down here for looks like the stairs. So making some, building the stairs first out of plot play and then using this sort of uh, piece here which creates a texture you can press the aluminum then on this piece to give it that sort of metal texture on it and then you cut out your pieces there that will go on top of the stairs you add the texture on them and then he's placing those on top of each of the steps of the stairs there it looks like so it's very interesting i'm also just quite curious as to how he made like the metal sheet panels that go along the side of the building and it looks like there's maybe something talking about this step here uh, and maybe over there as well too, or here, I don't know actually, but I need to check what some of the translation is on this because it's kind of hard to tell exactly how he made those just by looking at the pictures. I need to check the translation, uh, but those look really interesting how those must have been made or if those are something that you can just buy like that and he just cut them out. I'm not sure, but you can see he's adding a whole bunch of colors to them, blue and green, red, yellow to add rust and all the different colors around there. Then building this tree down here, which is where you just take a bunch of wires and twist them all up together and then twist them out until you get eventually smaller and smaller branches and clipping off little bits of wire until you form the tree just out of a bundle of wire there. So it's quite interesting. I've never tried it. It seems very tedious work to do, but of course it looks fantastic when it's all done there. And then going in and adding some dirt effects and stuff on the ground, um, making something to look basically like a... Uh, broken concrete slab sort of just like outside the building there looks very cool and then just more dirt and some wood panels here that will go on for like this kind of uh, deck that's like in front of there or just like a just yeah the wood flooring bit on the outside and i'm just trying to think of the scale of this this is like 135th scale so it wouldn't be all that tall i mean something like that i guess for the size of this building you can just see the size of the diorama 
you know, in, at 135 scale, not really that huge of a piece here, but it's just packed with so much detail and so realistic just for this tiny size. It's pretty amazing. Got the aircon unit up there, like on the top of the steps on the side of the building. The tree looks really cool. All right, then on to the next one here. This one is a huge scene of, you got uh, trains, buildings, tanks, lots of people, all kinds of stuff packed into this entire street scene here. On the next page, that's pretty cool. So you can get a whole look at the entire scene. Again, it's gigantic. I mean, you got a number of buildings there. You got the, the guy up there with the model. And yeah, it's just gigantic. I mean, what would you do with something like this? I don't know if you, you go through, I mean, probably so years of work just kind of working on this. And then you've got this big, massive thing. I'm not sure what you would do with something like this if you have space in your house for it. Or, I mean, if you... Uh, sell it or you get it featured in some sort of gallery or something like that I don't know but it's it's pretty amazing just all the work that went into this I mean you've got all the buildings you've got the train you've got the tanks and all the people and the entire street scene and all the everything going on in that is just a massive amount of stuff in here there's got to be there's got to be over 50 people just in this by itself all, all the details everything in there you got some horses you got trees and everything just going on in the scene. Everything's happen. Everything's doing something. Like everything's there for a reason. All the people aren't just like placed in there arbitrarily, but they're all appear to be doing something. It's pretty incredible. All the planning and everything that must have gone into this scene. It's all the work, all the supplies as well too. I mean, it's got to be just like thousands of dollars worth of just materials and everything going into this as well too. So. It's pretty amazing, all the kits and everything used for that. And this one, I'm not sure the scale of this offhand, but uh, I, have to, I have to go back and check. But All right, now let's check out a Hazel here from Naoki. So it's not really exactly a diorama theme, so it's just the mobile suit on its own. So I think that's maybe the end of the diorama portion of the magazine. And now it's Advanced Zeta themed, which I'm not complaining about. So uh, very cool build from Naoki here and as we'll see as you check out some more images of that he made some interesting changes to the design so this was the recently released uh, master grade kit uh, version of this and not only has he just updated or just like added some details changed some details here and there on it just some minor things but also like the most noticeable most noticeable difference for me is the color changes so he's gotten rid of a lot of the yellow and red bits like around here in the chest the vents and the legs instead of yellow are now just gray. The V fin obviously is originally yellow. Now it's just white. So it's a very just white and gray color scheme. And you got all these little pops of red for the accents on the actual kit. And then the decals as well too in red there. And then this really nice pale blue color for the feet and the part of the Primrose uh, weapon there on the backpack. So really cool color scheme for this. I will definitely have to keep this in mind if I ever get around to painting mine, but because I really like the look of that just being so much more white than the original one. It makes it look very cool. It's quite a fitting look for the hazel here in this case, I gotta say. I think it looks very nice. So you got some nice detail shots of that over here, of the head and the chest. Looks very cool. Yeah, I love it. So, really like that. And then we got some more Advanced Zeta stuff here of uh, the set of small scale kits that were originally released with Dengeki Hobby many years ago. And if you guys know, these were recently re-released as a set of P-Bandai kits. Uh, the Hazel Custom and the Hazel 2 are both in 1 to 200 scale, so they're like smaller than your HGs. And then the Kehar and the Bigwig are in 1 to 400 scale, so they're super tiny. I mean, they're really, really tiny. So mad respect for actually painting these up, especially the really small ones are quite difficult to paint just for how small they are. And like advanced data designs have a lot of tiny little color apps so you can see over here, like some of the masking and work that he had to do to paint those. Yeah, I don't envy that. Even the Hazel kits, they're just seam lines everywhere. So that's just a ton of work just to paint those up for how detailed those designs are as well too. And they look great, so. Some really cool images of those. I really like this version of the Hazel 2 as well because it's got that extra armor on there that the HG kit uh, and the MG kit don't actually have. So I like that. Uh, hopefully maybe we'll someday get a version of the kit that has that armor on it, extra armor on there as well too. That'd be nice. All right, then we have a, another, this one is 144 scale, advanced Hazel here, or uh, no, sorry, I'm sorry. This is the Hazel Auslaw. Yes, in 144 scale. So not as much really changed on this as far as like the colors or anything like that. It's a little bit darker, I feel like, than normal, but you got some nice pre-shading on there on that really dark blue and then it's pre-shaded as well too. So like around on like the corners and things, it's basically almost black on there. So it's a pretty interesting kind of just slightly changed color scheme for this, but uh, 
it's a pretty impressive looking build really like that and so it's quite the stark difference obviously from Naoki's very white version of that and it's a similar uh, design basically to Hazel also there I guess basically the same actually I should say uh, it's just that this is the HG version and he's got the shields up on the back this is kind of what's throwing me off where Naoki built his in a little bit different way uh, with the Hazel 2 backpack on it and there's no Hazel 2 backpack here on this one but anyway you guys get what I mean they're both Hazel Osla. This one's in the super dark blue color scheme. That looks very cool. So you got some more images there of that. Uh, yeah, really nice. All right, now the Gunpla catalog version MG, PG, RG over here. Just some versions of the RX-782. So again, just kind of an advertisement there. I believe that's for a different like special issue of the magazine. Uh, then we've got the Lightliner and a GM Intercept custom build here. So this was another P-Banda item. And so we just got a custom build of that it looks it's a it was an interesting release most definitely so i really like it in this kind of little bit different color scheme instead of the like gray and light purple color scheme of it originally which you can see in that tiny little photo up there it's just all gray and gray and black basically for that so quite cool looking i gotta say really cool work with like the lines on the top of the backpack there as well too quite interesting so an interesting kit no doubt uh kind of goofy but i think he made it look pretty cool there just with some repaint and some different uh, uh, details and stuff added onto that. Really interesting. All right, the Gundam Weapons. Again, this is just an advertisement for the special edition of the Gundam Weapons uh, kind of magazine special edition MOOC of the ARC-782 Gundam featuring the perfect grade Gundam. And I believe that also includes uh, Max Watanabe's perfect grade Gundam as well too, or that's in a different issue, maybe later on or something. All right, then we got the RX-78 Fu here, a design that I find particularly ugly of the 1 to 1 scale Gundam in Yokohama. But anyway, this is the 1 100 scale version of that kit. Not Master Grade, I should note, as I just see people online, a lot of people online refer to it as Master Grade. It's not, it's just a 1 100 scale non-grade, technically. But I mean, yeah, it's an ugly design, but the painting on this is really nice, at least. It's got some really nice painting, uh, the colors, the matte coat. Just really kind of bring it together so you can see the unpainted kit ver versus the painted kit. So unpainted, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of ugly. It's got a lot of just terribly ugly seam lines on it, but uh, he did a pretty good job kind of putting perfume on a pig there, basically. But yeah, that, yeah, yeah, interesting enough. All right, here's the 1144 scale version as well, too. Uh, this one, uh, including the kind of Gundam dock there as well, which was an added thing included with that kit, if you guys have ever checked out the kit. So we got a bunch more photos of that and another photo here again comparing the painted and unpainted version of the kit up there a little look at some work in progress kind of uh maybe a little paint a uh, little bits modifications or something added into that a little scribed details maybe a couple of little bits all right then this one which is super cool this is probably one of my favorite things in this i gotta say i'm just in love with this and i think i'm going to make one for myself i'm really Super tempted. When I first got this magazine, I, like I said, I had seen a couple of these things, a couple of these dioramas and Naoki's build I'd seen around on Twitter. Uh, so that was kind of the reason why I wanted to get this. When I got this, and then just the, a couple weeks ago, I've actually had this for a little while, and I was just kind of leafing through it, and I saw this, and I thought, okay, I gotta make one me one of those. So uh, this is a kit bash of sort of, it's an act zaku, but it's a high mobility type. Yeah, so I guess it's just a high mobility type act zaku. So it's basically like the top half of the act zaku and the legs of the high mobility type. And it doesn't have the shoulder shield. It's just got two spiked shoulders. And it's got the massive axe from the high mobility type. Uh, I, which, whose version of that is the Ortega's version of the high mobility type zaku too. Anyway, so it's just a kit bash basically of some different parts of uh, the HD The Origin kits, and it's really cool. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and make me one of these. So you guys may see a video in the very near future of me doing a custom kit bash project with these kits. So watch out for that in the near future anyway. But here's just a bunch of uh, Origin kits here, and it seems like it's just kind of talking about some different kit bash options, things that you can do. So like adding the high mobility type legs onto the prototype goof, or adding the prototype dom legs or like the high mobility type zaku two legs onto the prototype dom or the whole lower half of the body onto the prototype dom so you got some really interesting ideas for different uh, very easy customizations that you can do between these kits and that's one reason why i love the hg the origin uh Xeon kits is because they're they're so compatible for making just all sorts of random custom variations of them so 
Here's another cool one down here with like the body of the Akzaku or the prototype dom, like most of the prototype dom, and then the shoulders and the head of the goof, and then the forearms of the prototype dom there looks like as well too. So man, uh, that also looks quite cool, I gotta say. So very interesting. Again, you got some work in progress images here of this, some, I guess a couple little like modifications and just painting tips for painting that. And the finished result there looks so cool. So I really, really like that. I'm probably going to try to make one for myself. All right, moving on to the next page here is the Road to Gumpla 40th and Beyond. So again, it's just a conversation talking about some different kits, I guess, just uh, between these two guys who I'm not sure uh, their names are there in kanji and... There's no English, so I don't know. I'm not familiar with the faces. So you may just look at some old Hobby Japan issues, some old kits. You got some F90 going on there, uh, some Shining Gundam, some RX-78 too. So maybe just talking about some of their um, personal favorite, like old kits or something, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, moving on to Hathaway's Flash Information. You got some cool illustration work of the Messer down there, the illustrations for that, some character illustrations, some uh, stills from the upcoming movie, which again is delayed. We got the Next Edge style Kasi and Penelope over here. So you gotta look at those. They're coming out as Next Edge style figures. So those should be fun. And new Gumpla items. So now we're getting into just basically all just kind of advertisements. So I'm probably gonna go through this section relatively quickly uh, unless there's anything too interesting. But so we got the new 1-100 scale Calamity Gundam that's coming out. I'm pretty excited about that. That looks very cool. We got the Death Scythe and uh, HD and the RG Wing, the TV version of the Wing Gundam there, but also it's kind of updated a little bit from the TV version, so not entirely TV accurate, I suppose. P Band I step over here, the Mark V, of course, which is already out, a new version of the MG Crossbone, a couple other different just P Band I items that are coming out, the P Band I Wing set there, the Gundam Base version of the Perfect Grade there, it looks like. Or no, the MG version 3.0, Gundam Base version of the 3.0 Gundam. All right, and then yes, the that big expensive unicorn bust thing, like capsule unicorn bust that's coming out as well too. 38 centimeters tall, holds a little capsule in there, has a little kind of remote control for the lights and sounds and stuff for that. Very interesting. Got some uh, Gundam Forte figure news up there. A new set coming out from Gundam Forte with the Endless Waltz version of the wing and the Death Scythe, it looks like, and then the gun cannon and a couple of different serpent variations and a, some weapons there for that. Gun tank, I should say. Did I say gun cannon? Anyway. Uh, and then some different desktop army stuff. So a couple of different desktop army sets that are coming out. They're kind of made and schoolgirl related. I'm sure those are like specific characters or something. I don't know offhand. Sorry. A uh, bunch of stuff here, which I'm not exactly sure what this is all about, but you got some Godzilla, Ultraman, Gundam stuff all kind of going on together on this page. All some Hobby Japan recommended stuff. Uh, an advertisement here for the uh, One Point Technique book, which I recently used for making that uh, tutorial on video on the One Point Technique, kind of basic intro tips and tricks. So check that video out if you haven't seen that, but I will use that book some more for making some more tutorials for you guys, uh, probably in the near future. So we got a little kind of basic comic over here. Some new stuff coming out from the G-Frame line. So you got the G-Frame Hainu coming out as like a special set there. And then the next uh, Series 5, or no, sorry, Series 13 of Gundam G-Frame. There with the GPO-1 FB, the Buster Gundam, and the Zaku-2 F2, both versions of that. The Middle Robot Spirits, it looks like a version of the Night Gundam there, I believe. And some more Robot Damashi stuff, Robot Damashi version anime figures, a whole bunch of those. The metal build uh, version of the, not the Dynamace, but the, wait, what is that? Dynamace Repair 3, that's what that is. Yes, right. So, looks super cool. I'd love to have that as an actual Master Raid kit. Uh, unfortunately, it's just a metal build. Sad day. But, alright, then we have the Gundam Guys Generation. Camille Bidan figure coming out there. So you got some teaser images for that. Some different uh, Gundam related kind of apparel over here. It looks like boxers. So you can make your boxers look like Gundam skirt armor. Really cool black Tri-Stars shirt and fanny pack there. And then our fixed figuration cost signature poster inside here is of the high mobility type Zaku. So very cool. That looks really nice. The origin version of the high mobility type Zaku, I should say, to be precise. And on the other side of that is a very large poster image of the Temptation to Chaos diorama build. So that's also very cool. 
Next up is just about the fixed figuration, Zaku 2 high mobility type origins version, so that's going to be coming out. I guess I actually didn't know that, so this is the first time I'm hearing about that. But they already released the regular uh, Shara Zaku and I think the regular Zaku 2 as well. So now they're making the high mobility type also. So that's very cool. So here's more information about that. You got some promo images just showing off the details and things about what's going to be included with that set, I suppose. So here's showing the different like arm types between the different releases so far, for example. So. Just got your variations and things. The Tamashii Nation, Gundam Fix Variation, Metal Composite, uh, Zaku 1 there. Black Tristar's version of the Zaku 1 as well. Another advertisement for a different MOOC that we have, again, already previously reviewed. The 30 Minutes Mission Special Issue. So again, you can check that video out as well too if you're interested. I did a review on that one already also. A little bit here about new 30 Minutes Mission stuff coming out. The new, I believe, Spinato all right, is the name of that one new release from 30 minutes missions lines so there's a bunch of information there about some of the different option sets and things for that as well too Tekken 10 seconds to decompress this is a cool little diorama here uh related to the obsolete models so you've got your obsolete uh figure or kit there sort of folded up prepared for airdrop i guess so pretty cool little diorama here set inside the back of an airplane here i suppose right so you got that folded up and you got some cool Kind of like, um, I want to say, I don't know, it's not luggage, but uh, equipment, sort of stuff or supplies packed up there on its back, sort of. So pretty cool little scene there. And you got this guy over here on the side, kind of checking his cell phone or whatever. So really quite the cool little diorama there using the small little obsolete kits there from Max Factory. Very cool. And HG Elgaim kit, another kit that I have recently released. So again, you guys can check that out if you're interested. It was a cool little kit, definitely. Really nice. And then we've got a special kind of few pages here, maybe, of some different Votoms related things. So Votoms fans, you got some cool stuff to look at to enjoy in this issue here as well. So I think this is related to an uh, HD remaster version of the Blu-ray set box, I guess, of Votoms. So I guess that's what this is related to. So some pretty cool scope dogs built in here, if you're a fan. This is the Bandai 120 scale kit of that. You got the big missile pod and the sort of sitting pose there for that. And some work in progress kind of detail shots over here showing some little modifications and things done to that. So that's all very cool to see. I've never built one of these kits. Someday I should just check out one of the 120 scale Bandai Votoms kits. I've always wanted to just for the sake of it. I'm not really that into the designs to be honest but I just want to build one of them just for the experience of building and reviewing one so at least the information is there for you guys if you want to know uh, my opinion on them I can share that with you guys so eventually someday uh, I will build and review one of these and share that with you guys but all right so there's that and then we got some painted pilot figure here as well too which looks very nice gotta say and then a little diorama as well too so you got a couple of them set in this sort of diorama with sort of like Aztec looking um, statue sort of building ruins there I guess I should say ruins that's the right word that's what I want to say uh, and the burglary dog oh interesting okay anyway burglary dog here so some more Votam stuff again this is uh, a Bandai kit I would assume I'm just trying to see here oh sorry this is a wave 135th scale kit actually so a little bit smaller uh, kit from wave so you got some nice images of that. The work in progress again, just painting and just showing like the, the wash used for that. So cool if you're a Votoms fan. And then not to be left out, we got some Dugram in here as well too. This is another special issue that came out of the Hobby Japan Mechanics uh, magazine uh, that was Dugram themed and came with this little model kit included to be able to make this uh, sort of sitting in the sand there of the Dugram. So that was cool. I really was tempted to pick up one of those just for that little model. It's a cool little model and you can paint it up and weather it up, whatever, like that. So that was a cool release. So maybe maybe if I can still find one of those, I might try to get one of those. Uh, but all right, some other different stuff here. Legend of Sunrise Mechanics. Yeah, this is something I'm not really too familiar with. Sorry to say, and that's going to be the case kind of going forward as we go in. Uh, Further into this, it's getting a little bit more obscure. I know some of you guys probably know exactly what all this stuff is, but for me, it's just getting more and more obscure as we go along. It's uh, sort of a Super Sentai Power Rangers themed something. I don't know. Sorry, you guys. But uh, I'll just sort of 
go through this relatively quickly because I would assume most of you guys are also here for the Gundam related stuff as well too and we're kind of already through that. So this is about the Super Robot Infinitism there. We got some V Siren Neptune. This is the uh, 144 scale Volks kit. So I believe this one, was it just previously released or it's not released yet? I think it was just recently already released or it's soon to be released. Anyway, kit here. It's a pretty cool, Five Star Stories is also something I'm not really all that into, but I mean, some of the designs are pretty interesting. That's one I'd maybe like to try at some point as well too. Uh, one of the recently released HMM Zoids kits from uh, Zoids Wild from Kotobukiya. Kotobukiya started making Zoids Wilds kits now and that's good, because definitely Kotobukiya's kits are a lot better than the Takara Tomi kits. They're a lot more detailed and everything, so definitely check that out if you guys are interested in Zoids kits, the new release from uh, HMM series from Kotobukiya. Got some Sakura Wars stuff over here, another cool uh, diorama it looks like. So you got your Sakura Wars kits there. We've got it. Bandai's been just making lots of different variations of those. There's probably about a dozen of them out now or something like that. So if you're a fan, there's lots of options out there for those as well too. So there's a couple of different uh, Sakura Wars releases. They look really nicely modeled, I gotta say. Some Good Smile Company Modoroid kit here. Uh, and you got some different detail shots of that. It's the uh, Ghost in the Shell stuff. This is a 148 scale scratch build there of this sort of uh, hovercraft sort of thing, drone, or anyway, from uh, Ghost in the Shell. That's kind of interesting there. Scratch build and looks like maybe 3D printed parts there for that, for a little touch comas. Very interesting. Some Macross related stuff here, 30 minutes mission stuff, just a little kind of guide about how to apply water side decals, I guess, on a 30 minutes missions kit, basically. So 30 minutes missions custom build using some different option parts. It's actually a pretty cool looking custom build there. The weapon is quite nice looking. Very big, hefty weapon. All right, again, just some stuff that I'm not really familiar with. This looks like Super Robot Wars or uh, something. What is that? I don't know, actually. So I'm not going to guess anyway, but that does look pretty intense if that's the kind of thing you're into. It looks like a pretty wild, I don't know if that's a figure or a model, I'm going to guess that's a, probably a figure. Alright, so just gonna moving on, next edge style stuff. Uh, here, high middle R frontline kit, a Dragon R custom, and a bunch of stuff. We've got some Ultraman stuff here, Ultraman, Ultraman, Bandai's Ultraman, Figure Eyes kits, new Ultraman, Figure Eyes, SH Figure Arts. Ultraman, another Dragon Dude, some different Alice Gear Aegis information, new Alice Gear Aegis, I guess, designs, and the new kit coming in from Kotobukiya in the Megami device lineup. Uh, a feature here about the new Schoolgirl line of model kits from Kotobukiya. This would be the first release, I forget the character's name offhand, but the second one just recently came out, and I've got it here, so I'll be reviewing that one for you guys in the near future. Uh, this is another advertisement for Hobby Japan uh, MOOC that came out, their Extra line. Uh, I really wanted to pick this one, this issue up, but it was sold out really fast, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to find one or not. If I can find one, though, I want to pick up that issue of uh, Hobby Japan Extra. They're just related to those kits, so hopefully I'll be able to get that in the future. All right, here's some other new kits and things coming out. So there's a bunch of stuff here, all sorts of Bandai stuff, Kotobukiya stuff, Hasegawa stuff. Uh, hobby photograph. Here's a little just tip about how to take pictures of your models. That's interesting. So just using some simple tools, using some different colored paper, a simple light, your phone, your iPhone in this case, or whatever. Uh, Nomoken 33. So some tips about plot plate, I guess, here. Making stuff from plot plate, working with plot plate, cutting plot plate, gluing plot plate, all that good stuff. And the Krakenvogel, the kit that I'm currently working on. So uh, mine's kind of almost done, so you guys should see that pretty soon, but here's something where they've used what looks like pieces of runner to make a kind of scaffolding around that to make this pretty cool little diorama here of a Krakenvogel being serviced there, it looks like, probably in this sort of just scaffolding setting with some crew figures there along with that as well too. Very cool, there you've got Kuakama Sensei with looks like Max, it's kind of hard to tell when they're wearing masks, but Max and I forget this other guy's name as well too, but uh, frequent co-conspirator there, but cool little diorama. Yeah, making just a really simple scaffolding there of what I can only assume is pieces of runners, it looks like. But I don't know, that might just also be 
using a piece of pl uh, pl plastic tube as well. I'm not sure. Anyway. Here's how the LED was put into that, and then just advertising for the Camel, which is also just recently released, which is the next kit that I plan to build from the uh, Machine Krieger line. And it's more about how to detail paint your Kotobukiya table set for your character figures or character kits there to make it look like wood, I guess. That looks very cool. And this little accessory sets for that. Some painting tips and uh, materials used uh, Vallejo or Vallejo materials used for dioramas here some other different uh, just little kind of tools I guess in use over here for working with clear resin looks like scale model review here oh so some scale model stuff if you guys are into that airplanes airplanes I'm not it's not my thing so I'm just gonna kind of pass through this pretty quickly ships some warship there it's really amazing stuff I have a lot of respect for the guys who do this type of modeling. It's not really my thing, but it's pretty amazing. So, very cool stuff there if you're into that. Uh, it was just kind of relegated to a small section here towards the back of the magazine. Car models here as well too. So there's some cool photos of that stuff. Take a break. Uh, using that figure from this set. What was the name of that set? It's like a Campus Friends 2 set recently released from uh, Tamiya. Uh, figure set. There are some cool figures in that set. I picked that up, so hopefully we'll be able to use a couple of those in something in the near future. 120 scale figures, so some other different scale model stuff, scale model stuff, tools, kits, figures, all that kind of good stuff in there. Some other uh, spacesuit, creating some spacesuit for something. I'm not really sure what that's from or what that's for, but some other just kind of slightly Machine and Krieger looking kind of stuff, but it's not a little bit different with this uh, underwater suit there. Sort of Bioshock looking as well too, isn't it? But there's all that. This really weird monster looking demon kaiju sort of looking thing. That's pretty wild. Very unsettling, really, to be honest. Uh, some Medicom toy stuff. So some different toys, figures. All of that good stuff in here. Saint Cloth. Some Square Enix products. So some different Square Enix products that are on the way. Both Mecha and non-Mecha. All this kind of good stuff there. Alright, I think we're basically getting to the end. Where it's just in all of this kind of stuff. Again, that's just not really so much for me. Ah yeah, they're coming out with a series of these Kyoto. Which are just like a plastic figures, or uh, vinyl figures anyway, statues, but they're done by the same designer who made a garage kit versions of the Evangelion girls. So I think they're, these are like quite expensive, like $120, $130 for these each. Uh, so really expensive, but I mean, as far as just like uh, statues go, I mean, I guess that's pretty normal. But what scale are these things? They're one seventh scale, so they're relatively big. So really beautiful designs, uh, redesigns of the, or just interpretations of the Eva girls. There's also garage kits that were made of them as well too, but uh, in different poses and stuff. So he made kind of new poses for the statue versions of them. So anyway, very cool. All right, now let's see. You got some uh, Queen's Blade. What is this? I don't know what all this stuff is. So happy Valentine's, yada, yada, yada. Some cheerleader stuff. Another Ray figure here, which looks pretty cool with the scythe in her black plug suit. Some other figure related releases on the way, just anime character figures and dolls or character figures, Love Plus, which is a game I believe, right? And all of that, very nice, yes, yes, okay, thank you very much. Figure photography collection, so, okay, got some more Ava stuff up there, Ava Girls uh, launch figure as well. Uh, Sam Porter Bridges, and just more figures and figures, toys, figures, toys, toys, figures. And finally, the last bit is some black and white pages where there's just more advertisements. Usually there's some cool interviews and stuff in here as well too, or there'll be like some interesting articles. Uh, how to build Max Watanabe here. So, I don't know, just an article about Max's exercising regimen or something, I don't know about being a triathlete. So there you go. An article about Max Watanabe. 
some other different stuff, advertisements, and I think that is basically it. So a lot of cool stuff to see in this issue, definitely. Uh, as far as monthly magazines go, you know, pretty standard, but there was some cool stuff in there, no doubt. But yeah, that is going to be it for today, guys. So thanks for hanging out, checking out this cool issue of Hobby Japan with me, guys. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that's greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for your support, and thank you to S. Gundam Store, of course, as always, for making it all possible. So check out some different kits and all these new products and things. Of course, at U.S. Gundam Store, I'll have the link and the coupon code for you guys to use down in the video description down below. All right, till next time, guys. Hope you're having a great day. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.